back to the community, folks, and thanks for being here and being part of Slade's VW Beetle. I really appreciate my subscribers. Please subscribe if you can. If not, I understand. I hope everybody enjoys the video today. And also, if you look down in the description, you'll see a link to my t-shirts, stickers, and apparel. It really helps support the channel. I appreciate it if you take a look and click the link. Enough about that. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild the Solex 34 Pick 4. Now, before you get crazy, the 34 Pick 3 is pretty much the same, and I'll point that out. I've put this carburetor on a car. It ran okay, then it quit running, then it ran okay, so it needs a deep cleaning. So, we took it off the engine, as you can see. And we're going to go ahead and also test out ChemDip. I want to see how this stuff works. I've seen a lot of great reviews on it. My throttle shaft's good, so I'm lucky there. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to take it apart together. We're going to chem dip it. And I'll edit the video so you don't have to wait around forever while it's sitting in its dip. We're going to take it out, blow it out, clean it up, put it together, and see what happens. Let's get started. First things first, this is the 34 pick four, okay? And I'm gonna set it right here. Here's the 34 pick three. Now, there is some slight differences as you see there, okay? Not a big deal, but all the adjustments and everything are the same. Slight difference in the throttle linkage, as you can see here, okay? And then as we rotate around to this side, I hope you can see that. You can see the differences here. Otherwise, it's not a big deal. The reason I'm not using the 34 pick three, it's gonna need sent off to Volksbits because the throttle shaft is bad. And this came off of a good running parts car that I had here, so it just needs refreshed. Uh, the last guy blew a fire extinguisher into it when it backfired, and I think it just polluted it really bad. So, what we'll do is let's take it apart together and get that far right now. All right, hopefully you're in good view there. I'm trying the best I can. I have to get an attachment for my GoPro so I could have hung it on my hat and pointed straight at the carburetor, so forgive me for that one. Now, first what we're going to do... I'd already removed the spring, okay? We're going to go ahead and take the top off. So, just do your five screws. I'll speed this up right here. Okay, and remember, I speed certain parts up so you don't have to watch me keep taking off screws over and over, okay? This is going to pull off. There's the top. There's the crummy old gasket. But I got a good one from a kit I had, okay? So first, let's set this aside, and we're going to take the front pieces off. Let me see... There, can you see that a little bit better? Alrighty. You just have three screws here. Now keep your stuff together if you're not used to these screws on what goes where. Okay, now when you take this off, there's going to be a little spring here, okay, and I already see a problem. Look right there. Look at that. I hope you can see that. That's no good. This is what should look like, nice and flat. Okay, so there's one of our problems right there. Let's take the thermostat off, choke thermostat. OK, 
Okay, and that just holds it in place. There's a spring on this, and we'll go over that in the end when we're putting it back together. Take your plastic insert out. I know I'm probably in your way there. Come on. Okay, take that out, put it aside. Now we wanna take this out, so I usually turn them and pull right out. As you can see, that is all buggered up. That was leaking, that was not sealing tight. Probably part of my issue. Well, with the carburetor. Okay, so this is your needle and seat, okay? When your fuel comes in, it fills up your fuel bowl, and when the float gets high enough, it pushes up on this pin and shuts the fuel off going to the carburetor. If this is not right, your carburetor will overflow, or if this is sticking, you won't get fuel pumped into your carburetor, and you'll think you have a bad fuel pump. So, 14 millimeter, we're gonna take this out. Okay, and you're gonna notice something here. See, there's that little spacer. There are spacers on these that are different sizes. I'll put up a little chart right here. And it has to have the right spacer in there or once again, your fuel level won't be set to the proper place. All right, that's pretty much it on that part. Okay, let's set that aside and let's get on to here. So you may not, you're not gonna have this part on yours. This is, seems to be a, a 34 pick four thing. So, but I'm gonna have to clean it very well anyhow. Okay, 14 millimeter. I had some of these loose so that you didn't have to sit there and watch me breaking stuff loose. That you take out, there's a little washer on there. When you take this out, that's how you get to your main jet and we'll go over that in a second. Now, here is your float. You have a little arm here, be gentle, it's plastic. And then your fuel, your, I'm sorry, your float comes out. And there's your little piece. And we're gonna go over this piece in the end too, so you don't put it in wrong, and I'll tell you why. Okay, where is my wrench? I don't know if this fits this. It does. Okay, that's your idle circuit cut off, is what I call it. You're gonna take that out. This one's a little stubborn. Trying not to block the camera, it's not always easy. I am gonna go ahead and place an order on Amazon for my GoPro so I can strap it to my hat, my chest, so you can look down and see what I'm seeing is what I'm gonna do. I forgot to place the order. I have to clean these threads up a little. It's coming out not bad, just a little snug the whole way. Okay, so we are going to take our two screws out, your volume screw, your mixture screw, you know the deal, okay? Let's take that out. Just gonna keep taking it apart. And don't get crazy and forget where everything goes, but there's so much on the internet about these carburetors, it's crazy. You know, because there's a lot of people doing them. Take a look at this mixture screw. You can almost poke a hole in your finger with it. So when you are putting it back in, don't over tighten it. You just very lightly snug it because you'll punch a hole in the carburetor or break the tip. Okay, what else do we have? Take your little arm off here that squirts the fuel. And we'll show you how to adjust that later too. Alrighty. There we go. Next. Take that out. There's little holes in it. All this stuff's gonna need all clean thoroughly. As you can see by the small holes, it's like a grain of sand. 
gets in there and you're screwed. All right, idle circuit. And there's different size ones. It's an eight millimeter, by the way. There's a 55, 60, 65. There's a 55 in this one. So there's that. And you have a little screw right here. Let's take that out. And be gentle, because these are brass. Don't cross-thread them putting them back in. I must drop that. Okay, now, if you recall, when I removed this on the side, I said your jet is inside of there. Your main jet's inside. Let's see if I can get you in there with me. Let me re-angle. Get my screwdriver on it first. Can you see that down in there? I don't know if you can. You break that loose and you take your main jet out. That's your main jet. Usually 127.5, some people run 30s, some people go bigger. So, and they have a very tiny hole in them. So you gotta get all this stuff clean. It don't take much to clog one of them up. Let's move to the side. Now, like I said, if you're doing a 34 pick three, yours is gonna be a lot smaller, okay? And no big deal. This one's just bigger, a little different setup here. So let's get this apart. Now inside of here, you'll see when you take this apart, there's going to be a spring. And that spring, the wider end goes towards the carburetor. But we'll do that all when we're putting it together. And there's your diaphragm, okay? And obviously it comes off of there. This one has a ball bearing in it, so everything's going to need clean good. Thankfully, since I don't have another one, this diaphragm actually looks pretty good. Don't look like there's any issues with it. So that's a good thing. Okay, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, nope. one more thing that's important. You're going to have to get something and I'll show you. I happen to have extra ones. These are the screws that hold your tail light lenses in and that is the thread that you need. Down inside the carburetor, and I'm going to show you where I screw it into. There's a little brass cup in there. And let me grab a flashlight. Do you see where I screwed that into? Okay. You're going to pull that out, and that is what you have. Don't lose it. It's little. Okay. Once you do that, where you're not going to drop anything, turn it over on the bench and you're going to see a little ball bearing in there. Okay. Now that is important because you want to get that ball bearing out of there because you want it to be clean and mine does look dirty in there. You want everything stripped down as much as you can. I'm not going to take the throttle shaft apart because there's no reason to. I know the throttle shaft's good on this. Magically it is. And that's it. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to take this and this and we're gonna put it in the chem dip. It says anywhere from one to four hours. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna soak it for an hour, check it, soak it for another hour, check it, and see, you know, if it's good enough. Then we'll take carburetor cleaner, blow it through all the little passages, and then blow it out with air. And this carburetor should look much different and cleaner and neater when we put it together. And the most important thing is functioning properly. So let's get ready and get the chem dip and get ready to dip. So we have it apart. We are going to open up the chem dip. And we're gonna go by the directions. It says to soak for one hour, check it, soak for another hour, check it. Of course, I'll be editing the film, so you are not gonna see the time lapse. And we'll see how it does. 
In the meantime, I'm going to clean out all the little brass jets and everything with carb cleaner. I just grabbed this from Walmart because it works good and it's only like a buck seventy a can. <clears throat> and then we'll blow them out with air. So let's. I should have put gloves on and I didn't. Okay, let's put this in. I don't know how well this is going to fit. This ain't good. Let me see. Oh, it made it. Okay. I'll show you in a minute here. I don't think I'm going to fit both pieces in now together. No, I'm not going to. Well, that kind of stinks. So this is going to be a longer process than I thought. Because I can't get the top in there with it, the bottom. So, all right, that's fine. I'll just set the lid here. I don't think you're supposed to snap the lid tight. A buddy of mine was saying it can cause heat and cause some issues. So the time is four o'clock. At five o'clock, we're gonna check it. And here's what I mean. Only the bottom fit in there. Okay, it is what it is. So I'm gonna clean some of the brass parts up now. So I'll clean those up with some carb cleaner and get my air nozzle over here. So basically what you're gonna do, okay, for example, on the idle jet, you're going to spray carb cleaner in the little holes and blow them out with air. And of course, with your main jet, which is very small, you're gonna spray inside of there. It's hard to hold these little things and blow them out with air. So I'll do that and then I'll come back when we're taking the carb out of the dip. There's no point in you watching me clean little parts. I try to keep these videos short as possible. Okay, it's been one hour. It is five o'clock. So let's take it out and see what it looks like. Oh, a lot running out. Okay. It looks like it cleaned up pretty nice. Not too bad. Could use some scrubbing a little bit, but it actually did a nice job. I'll show you better in a little bit here, but I'm going to, let me see something here. And obviously we're still going to clean up with carburetor cleaner and spray it out. But wow, very nice, okay. We are going to put it in for another half hour to see if it will come a little bit cleaner down inside. So far, I'm pretty impressed. This seems to be working pretty well. I wish the can was a little bigger. I couldn't imagine if I had a bigger carburetor I'm trying to get it in here. So it is what it is though, it's fine. Okay, we are working on 30 more minutes, which will be 90 minutes altogether. In the meantime, what I did do is I cleaned up a lot of the jets. I already sprayed them out. Here, let me bring you down here. In the meantime, what I did, I soaked that, I'm going to clean that up, is, as you can see, I cleaned all the brass up. Anything external, I used uh, triple O steel wool because I'm weird, okay? And I put new O-rings that came in the kit on the, the volume and the mixture screw. They seem a little chubby, so I'm gonna use dielectric grease because it don't corrode rubber and put it on the rubber so it uh, spins in a little easier. But if these O-rings that go into the carburetor, if there's a leak around them, you're gonna have problems. It ain't gonna adjust right, and you'll be wondering what's going on. But I cleaned them all up. Besides polishing a little, I sprayed inside the holes with carb cleaner, okay? And blew them out with air, and everything seems fine now. Well, you know, for the cleaning part. 
We'll see about these O-rings if they're too big. Sometimes you know how these kits are, so I'll deal with it when the time comes. Okay, we are on one hour, obviously it already soaked. So we're gonna wait another 30 minutes and we'll check it again. All right, I was reading the can. It says every 15, does it say? Every 15 to 30 minutes after that. So that's been 15 minutes. Let's take a look. I wish the can was bigger, but it's not, it's, it's okay. But this is a little Solex carb, so what if I had like a Quadrajet, you know? It, it is what it is. I want to try something a minute here, just for the heck of it. I want to see. I'm a fanatic when it comes to, I mean, I got to use carb cleaner, but I want to see what this looks like. Oh my, that really does work. Now remember, when we're done here, we still got to spray out all the little orifices, holes, and then you know with carb cleaner, and then blow it out with air. But I will say it's cleaning up nicely. A uh, couple minor parts here that I might have to physically clean, you know, a little corrosion or whatever, and I'll show you what I mean. Like right there. But then again, you can soak up to four hours, it says. So, uh, if it's coming right off now. So that's pretty amazing. All right. I think I'm going to go 15 more minutes. And let me get my light, and I'll show you why. Down in there, I just wanted a little more cleaner but I'm sure it's getting into all the holes and everything. So let's put it back in. You guys get to see the edited film where you're not waiting on stuff, but I just mess around and do other stuff while I'm waiting while it soaks. All right, be back in a second. Oh, I just took this out of the cabin dip. Altogether, it was an hour and a half and I put the top plate of the carburetor in her now, and we're gonna let that go for one hour. So, looks like it actually cleaned up pretty nice. Here, let me get my light. It's hard to see down inside of things. Oh, where you at? There we go. So now we're going to clean it out with carburetor cleaner, and pretty much, blow air through all the passages and clean it up. Looks like it did an okay job. I could have probably let it soak longer, but I didn't. If you hear the compressor kick on, sorry about that. So just start going into all the little holes everywhere. Spray yourself like I just did. Get everything. There we go. It's going right down to the main. Once you do that, take your air and blow through. I'm sure a lot of you know that. So I'll go ahead and do that while you go get more coffee. Get me some too. All right, not too bad. I had sprayed carburetor cleaner in every orifice you could think of. And especially down inside here. And you're never going to be able to see this on camera. Okay, down inside your throat, there's three tiny holes. Look for them, you'll see them but I can't even get it on camera, they're tiny. Spray it all off and clean it good and blow it out with air. So while the top plate is soaking in the chem dip because it got another half hour, we're gonna go ahead and start assembling the bottom. So let's get started on that. First, we'll do the main jet. Let me see if I can get the camera in a little bit better of an angle here, okay? So, 
Let me get a little pointer, something to point with, okay? Down inside, right in here, okay? You're gonna have your main jet and you're gonna put that in. Let me slide it in there first. It's your little main jet. This is a 127.5. Some people run a 130, but we won't know until we run it what the deal is. So we're going to get a screwdriver. I'll turn the light on, and hopefully you can see that. Bring your screwdriver in here. This is kind of an awkward position to do this, but you're just screwing it in right there, okay? And then just give it a little snug, which I'm going to have to hold the carburetor to do that. There we go. You don't got to go crazy. These parts are brass, so don't get nutty. Just snug it in there, okay? All right. Now, I'm going to put my side cap on. Make sure you have your little washer on it. Oh, wait a minute. I know what I want to do first. It's easier to get to this. We're going to put the control on. It's that shut off control. My brain's sticking. I can't remember the name of it. But you'll be threading that into the side of the carburetor. That's the wire that comes from the positive side of your coil. And you'll know when you hit your key it's 14 millimeter, and you'll hear it click. Okay. Now, put our little cap on. Get it started. And make sure you have your washer on there. Okay. And I believe that's also 14. You want that tight enough so it don't leak. Okay. It's really come out pretty clean. I like it. Okay, a lot of you won't have this. It's because it's a 34 picked four. So a lot of you will not have this on there. Let me put that on. And where'd my wrench go? That's a 17 millimeter. On your 34 pick three, you aren't going to have that. Okay, so that's on. Let's put our volume and mixture screw in. And I'm going to put a little dielectric grease. As you know, I say in a lot of my videos, it doesn't corrode rubber. But the O-ring won't stick going in. This one I'm concerned about. The O-ring that came in a kit... It seems, where are you at? There you are. It seems pretty chubby. So we'll see what happens there. I'll find out in a second. Okay. So let's put that in. Where's my little screwdriver? Can you guys see? I'm just putting that screw in right there. Well, maybe it wasn't too chubby. It has a slight resistance, which is good because it means that the O-ring is sealing against the body. I don't like this screwdriver. It has a lot of resistance, actually. I don't like that. So, I put a different O-ring on there. That one was too fat. What I did, I buy a lot of stuff when I'm at Harbor Freight, and I bought for $5 this huge assortment of O-rings. Stuff like that comes in handy. So anyhow. Okay, I'm going to put a little dielectric grease around that just to make it move a little bit smoother. Okay, can't hurt anything. That's for sure. Unless you get it on the tip of it, you don't want to do that. 
and we're going to screw this in. I can feel a slight resistance, but not too much. The other O-ring was just too big. So screw this in gently. Do not do a cowboy stunt and over tighten it. You'll punch it right through. Okay. Just light resistance, just until you feel it stop and don't turn no further. Right there. Okay. You're just turning gently and you feel it stop. Now look where the screw's at and come out two and a half turns as a starting point. So there's a half, one, half, two, and a half. That's your starting point for that, okay? Now we'll take our larger big boy here. That's what you'll be adjusting your idle with. And same thing, squeak, squeak. You're gonna turn this in. Oh, let me hold the carburetor. I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm doing the best I can with these camera angles. This one's a little more trickier to do. Turn it in just until it stops. Okay, you see it just stopped. I didn't put no pressure. I have two fingers on this. And this one I'm gonna bring out two turns as a starting point. So half, one, half, and two. Okay, those are set for the starting point. Okay, so we got everything on that side. Now, we're gonna turn to here. Now, let me get these parts here, and let me see if I can prop this up with my O-ring starter kit. Can you see that? Okay. All right, get our screws ready. Move all my crap out of the way here. Now, a lot of you are going to have a different style setup, okay? You're going to have the smaller one like that, okay? Mine just looks a little different, same function, okay? And I got to put this diaphragm inside of there, and I'm going to drop this screw in and this screw in because it's a little harder to get them that's on there. Line up the diaphragm, get the screws in. See what I mean? Okay, now you're going to get your spring. And the fatter side or the wider side goes in towards the carburetor. And you drop it once. That's very necessary. But remember, there's looks like a pyramid. The fatter side goes into the carburetor. I'm going to turn it up like this. Why I put it on. Okay. Yours might look a little different, but it's the same deal. So don't get, get all freaked out. This one's hard to get started on the corner. There we go. I don't know if I'm in your way or not. If it is, I'll give you a refund. Okay. The other two in. Okay. Now, let's make sure it's moving smooth and we will do that. Let me adjust the light here. Hopefully you can see a little better here. When you pull your throttle down, you'll see this little arm. See it go in? Right here, look right there. Nice and smooth, okay? All right, so we got that together. Now we're gonna do our idle jet. Here, let me prop it up again for you. Okay, now first you have this eensy, beensy, teensy little screw. And it goes right in that hole, okay? 
This one's tricky to get in because it's brass and you don't want to cross thread it and it's little to work with. I'm in your way, but there ain't nothing I can do about that. You know how a screw goes in. Okay, put it in and don't go bananas. Give it a snug and there we go. All right, next is your idle jet. Now, I have a 55 idle jet and I also have a 60, but I'm gonna start out with the 55, okay? Now remember, I'd already taken these. Oh, where'd my ratchet go? There it is. This is an eight millimeter, by the way, so have that ready. I had already taken these, remember, and blue carb cleaner threw all the little holes in them, so take your little ratchet, you can use a little eight millimeter wrench if you have one and just give it a snug. Do not crank on it, trust me. I've seen it happen before people in emergency room. Okay, so that's done. We got everything on that side. Everything on that side and these are pre-adjusted, two and a half turns, two turns. That's the way I do them. You do what you see fit, but that's how I do them. And, now we're going to go inside. I'm going to adjust this camera a little bit closer. I want you to watch something here. Okay, down inside here, let me get a little pointer. Now, that is your main jet. Okay, there, focus. See this little hole here, right there. Okay, that little hole right there. You're going to take that little ball bearing and drop it inside of there. Because you're not going to be able to watch me do this. And then this little cap is going to go over it, but I'll show you that in a second. So, the ball bearing is going to get dropped inside of there. So, let me do that. That wasn't fun. It's like a little, one of them little games you play when you're a kid trying to get a little ball into something. But the ball bearing's in there. Okay? Now... Now what you're going to do, this little cap goes down into, can you see that? This little cap goes down in to where that ball bearing was. It kind of presses in. Take a screw from your tail light. It is the same exact thread, one of them long screws. Now don't screw your screw up. That was retarded. Okay, and you're going to screw it in there. It's actually threaded, okay? Now, you're gonna take your carburetor. I just can't get a good angle for you guys. Yeah, sorry. And you're going to put it in the hole that the ball bearing was in. And take a wrench or something, don't take a hammer, and give it a tap so it seats. Okay, and then just unscrew. I know you want to see it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, see that? Then it press fits down inside of there. All right, and all this is is the screw that holds the tail light lens in, and it is. Whoa, where are you at? Woo! It is the same thread. Okay, that's in there. Okay, we're getting down to the wire and the top plate has been in for one hour, so that's perfect. Here is, I believe it's called an air correction jet and it will go right in that hole right there. I think this is a 75, not sure. And make sure, like I said, not to repeat myself, you need to make sure you use carb cleaner and clean every little passage of these parts out and blow them out with air. Okay. Oh, don't do too tight like I did. Okay, here's your little spray nozzle. Okay, and make sure, cause this, I don't know if you can see that, how tiny that hole is. 
that hole right here. It's going to go in there. Okay, press it there on the end. And let me show you something here. You are going to position this. Let me get a pointer, a little pointer here for between the wall and this arm right here, right in between her. You want it spraying directly in between, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let me position it. Okay. I mean, you can always move it, but you want it right in between. You don't want it spraying. Here, let me show you. You want it spraying right in between there because you don't want it to hit the wall here or hit this arm here. You need it dead center to spray right down in between, okay? So it squirts nice. So that's it for the bottom part. Everything's complete, nice and pretty, nice and clean. So we're gonna set this aside now and take the top out of cleaner. The old chem dip challenge here. Phew, stuff stinks. Wow, actually come out pretty good. And the main thing is you want to clean it out all the little passages. That's the idea of soaking it. My buddy offered me to use his ultrasonic cleaner, and I probably should have. But I didn't, so it's too late now. It looks like it came out pretty good. So let me spray some carb cleaner, blow it off, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I cleaned this all off with carb cleaner and blew everything out. Remember, when you're doing these, spray your car cleaner in here, 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 like any little holes you can find. And when you're spraying in them, like I just sprayed in this one and that one, and it came out of the jet and squirted me in the face. So watch what you're doing. Don't be me. Okay, so this is all cleaned up. It's time to start putting this part together. All right, let me get you at a better angle here. Okay. You're going to take this diaphragm. You're going to put it in the front here. Now see how there's this little peg here? And you see how there's two holes here. They line up there. So you're going to put this in. But first, inside here, you're going to have to sneak it past there. See what I mean? And that's your butterfly. And it'll turn and pull in. Okay? Because when your butterfly moves, it won't hit this. Okay, so don't rip this diaphragm. It's very important that it's sealed. I'm in front of you. Give me a second. I'm trying to loop this on there. Okay, so remember, this only goes on one way. All right. Now, you have a spring. It's just one size the whole way through. Okay, and then your cap. Now this spring has got to go on there. I'm going to get in front of you a minute here. Make sure with this also, see the two holes? They got to go down there. So I'm going to turn this straight up for a second while I set it on. Give me a minute. I don't think you can see. Just give me one second here. Because I got to look. That's what I'm doing. There I am. I'm back. Okay. Make sure your spring is seated properly. You'll have to turn it straight up in the air when you're doing that. Here, just give me a second. I'll be out of your way. Okay, we'll take our screwdriver. I'll speed this part up. <laughs> and 
and look how pretty that looks. All right, back to this, but you see what I did, so we'll jump ahead, okay? So you see your lever in here, okay? That is actually for your butterfly. It opens and closes, okay? You'll see a slot in this plastic cup, but most importantly, do you see this? You see a ridge on there, right there, okay? And you're gonna see that right there, and that's where it seats into. So, make sure you set it right. Come on, here we go. And then it'll slide down inside, okay? Next, this goes over top of here, okay? And seats against there. So let me get it set up and then I'll show you because it's going to be hard to film doing this. First, I want to show you something. I almost forgot. See that little hook here? All right, see that? There you go. How's that? See that little bar? That hook is going to go against there and turn. So you got to make sure you grab the bar on the hook. Does that make sense to you? It should, because that's what puts the tension on the butterfly. So, gonna put it on there so the hook grabs it. Okay, so. This is the tricky part. You gotta put this on and you've got to get these little spacers in between here and then put a screw down. So I'm gonna put that in like that. I'm probably in your way, give me a second. And you put your screw I'm trying to be patient, getting aggravated with me. Come on. I'm horrible for trying to work with small screws. And it's fighting me. Okay. sure your spring stayed on you'll feel you'll feel the tension because of that arm on here so I'll speed this up Okay, so here's the deal. You don't want to tighten these too much yet. Leave them a little bit loose, okay? And as you can see on here, you have three notches. Now, do you see that little dot there? Yeah, you do. I know you do. You're going to turn this to the center. That's a starting point, okay? And you want the tension on here so it closes, but stays open just a little bit for your cold start. Oops, <laughs> I didn't have it tightened and it moved. Okay, so when you let go, you want that tension to close it. Just with the littlest bit of a crack there, you can't see it on camera, but it really is. Once you get it tensioned to that point, then tighten your screws up. So that's done and it looks pretty and all cool. And for your cold start, you have the tension there. All right. Now flip it over and we're going to take our needle and seat with our spacer. 
and there's different size spacers as I showed you earlier. Make sure you blow carb cleaner through that and these two holes and blow it out with air, okay? Because you need this clean. This will hang down inside and your float comes up and pushes it and drops down. That's your needle and seat. And that's what turns it off and on for the fuel to come in. So you're gonna put that in with your spacer, don't forget. And you're gonna take a 14 millimeter wrench and don't go berserk. Just give it a snug. I'm just using a finger on there, one finger. That's it. And what this should do is your float comes up and hits it and shuts the fuel off going in there. And as the float lowers, that drops down. So make sure that's moving free. When you hear people say you probably got dirt stuck in a needle and seat, they're talking about this. Okay, that's moving fine. Okay, so now we're going to install our float. Make sure this little slide pin in there moves nice and free. And you're gonna set it right down in that slot. Make sure it's moving it's nice and free, smooth. This, pay attention here. See how it's like half a horseshoe or whatever you wanna call it. It has to go in just like that. Do not have that bevel facing this way because it can stop the float from coming up high enough, okay? So, I believe that's it for that. Now, when you get these kits with these gaskets, you're gonna find out, and I'll show you here, kind of a universal kit. So they come with a zillion gaskets. Make sure you have the proper gasket because all these little holes are very, very important, okay? You have a lot of little holes here that need to have access and be opened up. So take it off, look at your holes, and make sure there's none of them, you know, blocked off, all right? So, we are going to take and put the top on. Make sure it's seated good. Okay, and let me grab the screws here. And I'll speed this part up. Okay, so you have your screws, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, can you see that one? There you go. I snug this down and then I crisscross because it's aluminum. I don't know if you have to, but I do. So that's all that matters. And pretty much check that. That's adjusted right. And I think we are set. Now, one more thing I wanna show you and then I'll let you go. I don't know if you watched my Solex carb adjustment video. I'll put it in the description and something across, come across the screen right there. You can click it. This is not your idle adjustment. That is not what it is. That is for your cold start adjust, adjustment. Sorry, it hiccups. Okay. Because once it's warmed up, it's going to be down here. Okay. Because your butterfly will be all the way open, okay? So, this is for cold start. See how it dropped down? The spring's cold right now, okay? Now, the way to adjust this before you put it on, remember, this was two and a half turns out. That's two turns out. That's to get you started, okay? Now, how to adjust this is go to your lowest setting, okay? 
and you're gonna already have mine adjusted. Screw this out a little wee bit, okay? And on the lowest part of the lobe, you see my fat fingers here, the lowest part of the lobe right here, okay? This is going to just, I mean, barely touch it where you can still, mine's rubbing a little, where you can move this freely, where it's just barely, barely, barely touching it. And then turn this, after it's barely touching it, turn this screw a quarter of a turn, okay, clockwise. And that will give you the four thousandths gap on the lower butterfly, okay? I hope that made sense. That's all done. It looks pretty. I give the chem dip a thumbs up. I actually think it worked good. I could have probably soaked it for a couple more hours and it would have even done better, but I believe all in all it came out pretty nice. To tell you the truth, all the passages were nice and clean. Everything's opened up. This carburetor is ready to go on and be installed. But it's 10 after seven at night and I'm cold and the garage is like 30 some degrees because I couldn't turn the heater on or you wouldn't hear me. So we will do this next. All right. It looks like a winner. Okay, so that is your Solex carburetor rebuilt. All right, now that was a 34 pick four, but the 34 pick three is pretty much the same. You're not gonna notice much of a difference in it. So the chem dip, I do give a thumbs up. Uh, it says you can soak up to four hours. I should have soaked it for a couple more hours, but I didn't feel the need to with mine. I have a couple other carburetors here that I am gonna take apart and do, and we'll do a demonstration on it in another video because a couple of the other ones I got, like you can see here, they're pretty bad. So I'm gonna give it a shot and see how clean they come. The chem dip you can use over and over, pretty much until it don't work no more, you know. But please go down in the description. There's t-shirts, stickers, apparel. It really helps the donation towards the channel. so I can continue doing these things I do, because we're gonna start testing a lot of products also, and maybe it'll save you guys from buying them if you don't wanna spend money and not know if something works. Thanks for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.